Hello everyone, in this episode I'm going to talk about how you can authorize your Blazor WebAssembly application using Cascading Authentication State and JSON Web Tokens. There was a question posted in the YouTube comment section asking me to make this video. This was a really good suggestion. Most of the videos that I make is because of the suggestions that you put in the comment section. So thank you Steffi for asking this question. For this demo, I have created a screen that is assign role screen where you can assign roles to the users, of course. So you can assign either none role. So if a new user is getting created, they will have no role. But if the user is verified, then they will have general role. And then there's a third role, which is admin. So admins will have access to this assigned rules. They can go ahead and delete users too, if they would like, but we'll have to hide the screen from the users who have no role and general role. We don't want them to have access to this page. And for that, we are going to use cascading authentication state. But even if we hide this page from the client side, our web APIs are still exposed. So these operations we are performing on web APIs. So anyone can just use tools like Postman and pass proper parameters and send the request to delete a user. And we don't want that, right? We would like to protect our web API requests too. So for that, we are going to use JSON Web Tokens. So let's first see how this page looks and how it works under the hood. And then we will make proper changes to protect our pages and web APIs. For that, I'm gonna go to my VS Code here. I did make few changes in this project. Instead of having a server project, now I have web API project. The reason why I did that is because I want to keep my Blazor and web API code separate so that when I push this in production, I could use Azure static web apps and web API project differently so that, you know, I could have like an efficient solution. And also it could be helpful when I move to Mavi when we have like iOS and Android application, this architecture will be helpful. So now if I have to run this application, I usually go to my PowerShell and open these folders in PowerShell and web API is where I don't make a whole lot of changes to I just do .NET run, which builds the project and runs my application. But when it comes to client, I like to make a whole lot of changes in client. So that's why I run .NET watch here. So that whenever I make any changes in my code, it detects that and refreshes my browser. It also opens the browser instance for me so that I could test my application. So let's go ahead and see our new page. I'm gonna log in with Julius Caesar. And you can see that Julius Caesar has access to this assign roles page. Here you can set different roles to different accounts. You can select these roles from these dropdowns. And I'm going to log out and log back in with John Smith to show you that even John Smith has access to this page. But we don't want John Smith to have access to this page. John Smith is going to be only a general user and Julius Caesar is going to be an admin user. So I'm going to go back to my Julius Caesar account. And here I'm going to set Julius Caesar as admin. And I'm going to set John Smith as general. So when I set these, this is getting updated in the database. I have added a column in my users table. If I refresh this page, you can see that Julius Caesar has a column, which is role. And that's where I have set it admin and general is what is set to John Smith. So if I scroll this way, you can see that John Smith is general account. Now we don't want John Smith to have this page, right? So if I log back in again with John Smith, we don't want this page to be detected 
when John Smith is logging in. So to protect that, we are going to use custom authentication state providers. For that, I'm going to go to my client project. And here we have this custom authentication state provider where we are getting the authentication state of the user because we are inheriting from authentication state provider. And custom authentication state provider is something that we have added as a service in program.cs. So if I pro open program.cs, you can see that I've added a scoped service, which is custom authentication state provider, which helps me give authentication state of the application. And that's what we're trying to do here. So we are adding email address as one claim. We are adding user ID as another claim in our uh, claims identity. We are going to add one more, which is going to be for role. So I'm going to say that this is going to be claim role and the role type is going to be role. And here we would like to add current users role column. So if I go back to my database, you can see that this is the column that we would like to set here so that we know what's the role of the user. Here, I'm going to say if the current role is equal equal to null, then we would like to set empty role. But if it does have value, then we would like to set that value to our claim role. This should be question mark. And then let's go ahead and add this into our claims identity, which eventually gets added as claims principle. And that's the authentication state, which gets returned to our application. Now, I would like to hide this page from John Smith, right? We would like to hide this page. We can do that from our nav menu. So if I go to my nav menu in the shared folder, if I go to nav menu in my shared folder, we have this link menu item that we have added, which is assigned roles. And we would like to hide this from John Smith or any of the user who does not have admin role. For that, I'm going to use authorize view. And this authorized view has roles attribute that we can use to detect the role of the current user. So if I set this roles parameter, I'm going to set it as admin. That means only admin users should be able to see this list item in the menu. So if I go back and refresh my page here, you can see that now John Smith does not have menu item. He does not have access to that assigned roles page anymore. I'm going to log in with Julius Caesar, who is admin of the system. Then Julius Caesar has access to that assigned roles page. But even if we are hiding the menu item, John Smith can still navigate to that page. So if I log in with John Smith again, even if I don't see the menu item, I can navigate to that page and perform operation. So it's not completely protected from John Smith. And we would like to hide this page, protect this page from users who do not have admin rights. For that, I'm going to go to my assigned roles page here. And here, I'm going to use an attribute. I'm going to say attribute. And I would like to authorize this whole page. And I'm going to say that only admin roles should be able to navigate to this page. Now, if I go back and see that now John Smith is saying that it's not authorized. Even if you navigate to this page, you cannot really do on this page because you do not have enough access. If I log back in with Julius Caesar, then I can go to this page and perform operations that I like. Now, you can hide menu items. You can also authorize a whole page. But sometimes you would like to disable some of the controls. Let's say if a new user is getting created, I don't want that new user to have this saved button unless they're verified. Let's go ahead and create a new user. I'm going to say create a new account, which is going to be for Bill Gates. 
and once i create account for bill gates and let's log in with bill gates too i don't want bill gates to have this save button unless bill gates is verified that means unless bill gates has general role he should not be able to update this profile so if i go to my database here refresh my database you can see this bill gates record here and if i scroll back you can uh, you can see that i don't think you can see it let me move myself you can see that the role is set to null here okay i'm gonna put myself back here so they do not bill gates does not have any role but still he's able to see the save button and i would like to disable this button because he has no role to do that i'm going to go to my profile page i'm going to go to my profile page and here we would like to disable this button the save button right we would like to disable this button so to disable this button we are going to use this cascading parameter which is authentication state and the reason why we could access this cascading parameter is because the cascading authentication state is wrapped around our whole application so if i open my application dot razor component here you can see that cascading authentication state is wrapped around our whole router and that's the reason why we could get that authentication state as cascading parameter so if i go back to my profile dot razor component you can see that i have this cascading authentication authentication state as parameter which helps me determine if the user is authenticated or not but we would like to also authorize the user right we would like to check if user has either general or admin role then they should have access to this save button otherwise the save button will be disabled to do that i'm gonna create a boolean property here which is going to be is user authorized is user authorized by default the value should be false and i'm going to set this value on uninitialized when user is authenticated the value will be set to true only when user either has role general or admin to do that so i'm going to say admin user is role in admin or user is in role general right so when user has either admin role or general role this property will be set to true now let's go ahead and set this to disabled property of this button i'm going to say disabled and here i'm gonna set that is user authorized so this button will be disabled when user does not have either general or admin role so if i go back you can let's refresh our application here you can see that now bill gates does not have this safe button if i log out log in with john smith who has general role he has the safe button if i log in with julius caesar he has the safe button but bill gates does not have safe button let's go ahead and give bill gates general role i'm gonna set general to bill gates and then log out and log back in now bill gates should have that save button because bill gates is one of the general user so now i'm gonna go ahead and update the profile see that bill gates and this is bill and then click on save that's how bill gates can save his profile now we have been enabling and disabling hiding and showing depending uh, showing ui elements depending on if the user has proper role or not but we have not protected our web api so if you look at this assigned roles it has you can change the role and you can also delete the user so let's say if someone finds out the web api link then they can go ahead and delete the user or even assign their roles we don't want that we would like to protect our users protect our web api too so 
let's go ahead and find out what's the user ID of our new user, Bill Gates, it's 42. If I go to Postman here and say that, okay, 42 is something that I would like to delete with no auth, is something that I would like to delete. And when I click on send, it's going to delete that user, even if we don't, we are not sending any JSON web token with this request and with, that is not good. We would like to protect our web API too. To do that, I'm gonna go to my web API project. Now I'm gonna go to my user controller in web API. So wherever we are generating the JSON web token, we also add claims to it, right? So let's go ahead and add the user claim to it. I'm gonna go to generate JWT method here. And here I am adding email address and user ID of the user in uh, in the claims claims identity whenever i'm generating json web token we would like to also add role here so just like we added role in custom authentication state provider i'm going to add a role when i am generating a json web token for a user when the user is getting logged in instead of current user this is going to be just user so i'm going to replace that and then this claim role is something that we're going to add into claims identity. Now that we have added our role into claims identity, we would like to authorize our delete user web API. You can authorize a whole controller or a web API by using authorize attribute. So let's go ahead and find our delete user. This is our delete user web API. And I would like to authorize this. So I'm gonna use uh, authorize attribute here. And in this, I'm gonna pass roles and this should be admin. And then you can, only admins can delete a particular user. Now, if I go back, Bill Gates has already been deleted through Postman. So if I refresh this, you can see that Bill Gates is gone. Let's go ahead and create Bill Gates again and try to delete Bill Gates from Postman and see if we can delete or not. So I'm gonna create Bill Gates one more time. I'm gonna say Bill Gates at gmail.com and password is bill.gates, very secure. And Bill Gates can log in too if he wants. And let's try to go ahead and delete this user. But before I do that, let me first rebuild my web API. I'm going to stop and rebuild my web API. And now I'm gonna go ahead and try to delete this user without any bearer token. So if I click on send, it's going to say unauthorized because you're not sending any JSON web token while trying to delete this user. So our web API is authorized now. If I try to do that with proper JSON web token, if I log in with Julius Caesar here, then Julius Caesar will have proper JSON web token. This is the web token, JSON web token of Julius Caesar. I'm going to grab that and come here and put it as a bearer token. Let's remove these double quotes and then try to send the request. Then it's going to say that we are facing an internal error. Database operation is affected to one row. Oh, we are trying to delete 42. Let's try to delete 43. I'm sorry about that. I'm going to go back to my postman here. We're trying to delete 42. Let's try to delete 43 because that's the new user ID. And I'm going to try and send this request. Now I'm going to get OK because now I'm sending proper JSON web token for deleting the user. If you have any questions, you can ask them in the comment section below or you can reach out to me on twitter or facebook i'm almost done with this application and in the next video i'm going to put this application in production thank you so much for watching let's put this in production in the next video stay tuned bye